think we can we can start. Th thank you very much for coming. Um, this is my second uh, session uh, at DevFest, the second year I participated in this, thanks to Helmut. Um, today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, rapid application development with Kodi and Query Mobile. Well, said like this doesn't maybe doesn't say much. Some of some of you already are um, probably uh, familiar with uh, jQuery and jQuery Mobile. Um, Codica is uh, a new tool that is gaining a lot of momentum. And uh, but before starting off, uh, I decided that we should start to talk a little bit about what rapid application development is. So <coughs> this is a, a friend that <laughs> brought the, the Iron Triangle. Um, some of you who are uh, busy with information technology and the projects might know already the definition of a project. Why, do, why I'm presenting this? The reason is we would like to understand why we need uh, rapid, rapid application development at all, because it's not the only way for developing an application or for um, putting together a project, an IT project. A project is a temporary endeavor with a defined beginning and an end usually time constrained and often constrained by funding on deliverables undertaken to meet unique goals and objectives. This triangle is often called the project management triangle. Why is it so important actually? As you can see in this triangle, normally when we have a project, we have some constraints. And these constraints, they generate our time, the cost, which some in some books or in some uh, uh, project management framework uh, include also, they, they are explained like the people working on a certain project, not only the, let's say, the, the, the dollars, but also the people invested in a project. And then we have a scope. Then, as you can see here in the middle, we have quality. Quality could be a fourth constraint, but what happens when you start to move? Imagine that we could make a little bit larger one of these um, segments, what, what would happen? If we have a very big scope as well, time and cost would enlarge as well. Sometimes though we have, especially in um, when the, the company is little, where the group of people working uh, on a project is fixed, we have some constraints where we cannot really enlarge anything. Imagine that we have uh, a fixed time or a fixed cost, which is actually working on a budget. So what can we really uh, tweak here? The scope is the same, we have a fixed cost, what we can tweak is the, is the time. So as you can see here, every, every project needs to be uh, performed and delivered under certain constraints, and the main ones are time, scope, and cost. Um, one side of the triangle cannot be changed without affecting the others, and in sometimes we have sometimes we have some sides which are fixed, like when we're working on a budget. And if we want to go to a further refinement, we have quality as a fourth constraint, which is anyway anyway dependent on on these three uh, sides of the triangle. So let's introduce a bit rapid application development. Um, Again, some of you already might know what it, what it is. Rapid application development was established in the mid uh, 70s. Dan Gelan, he was an IT executive of the New York Telephone Company. They were doing some development, and he came with this idea because he wanted to give a response to what was in vogue at the time, which is stru structural system analysis and design method. And also, at the time they were using as well the waterfall, some waterfall models. So what was the problem with these uh, methodologies? These methodologies were not really that effective when uh, they were addressing some time constraints because uh, the way they work is that you have to define all the requirements before even going into development. But what happens very often is that you are defining the requirements and as you define the requirements, the project changes because the project is in continuous evolution. 
So I, I, you are, have defined your requirements, and then you, again you have to change. And uh, rapid application development opposes this idea of a methodical requirements analysis, uh, which has to identify all the critical uh, requirements of a project. Actually, as, as we uh, as we see, uh, the, the problem is that the requirements change because it takes so much time that, that there is an evolution. This approach that started in the 70s was first formalized in 1991 in a J. Martin book, Rapid Application Development. And IBM, a pioneer of many of this, uh, of many technologies, uh, made an important development in the, in the 80s. So continuing with Rapid Application Development, and we are, we are almost done on this. <laughs> done on this. So it is made of four phases. Uh, we have the requirements planning phase, and this is similar to all the other uh, methodologies that we have seen. Uh, but there is um, a, a very important difference between uh, RAD and, um, for example, waterfall models. Um, the users in RAD are always involved into this process. Their uh, presence is determinant throughout all the, um, these uh, four phases. So the requirements are discussed by, uh, between IT managers, staff members who are involved into the, the development of the application, users and managers. Uh, all the, the, these actors uh, define together the requirements. Then we have a user design phase where there is a, an interaction between uh, who is developing the application and the users. Then we have the construction phase, which is generally the development itself, which includes coding and um, let's say hands-on on the computer to make this thing happen. And then we have the cutover phase, which is the final phase, testing, user training, and change over to new systems. So since there are some people in sales say that there are no clean deals in life, no? So rad sounds rad, but <laughs> there are also some cons. Uh, so let's see what are the pros and cons of, uh, of this approach. And then this will conclude our small introduction on uh, uh, rapid application development. Certainly what is important is the user involvement. Um, users are heavily involved throughout the design and development stages. And this is important because it reduces the, um, the chances of having late changes into the product. Uh, when you are developing something, uh, let's say, in your closet, and you just write down what are the user's requirements, and then the developer is in one side and the user are somewhere else, you really don't know uh, that there is really no interaction between these two parties. And it's very common that when you present the product to the managers and also to the users, they will say, oh, but this is not we were ex what we were expecting. Uh, we have to introduce some changes in it. And if the users are involved throughout the whole phase, uh, this means that they can give you their input. Then we have uh, evolutionary requirements. Users are not expected to define no requirements at the beginning of the project. And this is what we were uh, seeing in the, with the other kind of approaches, uh, where everything was defined and uh, crystallized at the beginning of the project. And then uh, while you started working on it, you realize that the requirements have changed. This keeps up, RAD keeps up uh, with, the, with the normal <coughs> evolution of a project, which is a, like a, a, a living being. And then this is probably what is most important because we were talking about the time constraint. It's the speed. Uh, RAD offers uh, speed. Uh, especially to the use of prototyping techniques, which is what we also we're going to see today. And uh, this is what Codica is, really. It's a rapid prototyping tool. Then there are the, some cons. Uh, not everyone is happy because even if we talk, we, we say that users are heavily, heavily involved throughout the process. It is actually impossible to involve every imaginable user. Some users would not be involved into this process and might not be happy. Might not be happy. Um, then we have reduced features. Of course, since we are talking about an approach that works with time boxing, um, 
generally you, you use this approach when you have to deliver something immediately, you have, you are, you have very tight deadlines, so it is difficult to refine everything and to go into, details of, uh, into the details of the features. Uh, but, uh, let's say, generally what happens is that these features, they are developed at a later stage. This concludes our, let's say, RAD in introduction. Now let's give a look at what are your options. Um, we are talking about RAD because uh, we want to understand better why uh, Codica is so useful and why jQuery Mobile is so useful and interesting. But everything that we learn has <coughs> to have a goal, like a use. So the final goal is to address these nice uh, friends that we have here, which is iOS mobile uh, devices, Android devices, and Windows phone devices. Now, it's important to, to take a look at the market share of this because we have to know where are we going to, who, to whom we are going to sell our products, really. And it, it's important that when, when we develop something, we know uh, what are the main targets. Now, Android is going so strong that it's uh, really unbelievable for, for many people. Um, the growth of this operating system for mobile devices has been so strong, especially uh, in the last year, that uh, it seems like uh, it, it should be the main choice whenever we want to sell something in terms of market, market shares. iOS is still doing good. It has the 19%. Windows has the 18%. This analysis is of, of the first quarter of 2015. <laughs> I think it, it might change a little bit with the recent acquisition of Nokia uh, by uh, Microsoft. We'll see. Let's say Android is still uh, the winner in this uh, competition on the market. So uh, when we use these tools um, and when we approach mobile development, it would be uh, futile, futile at this point to think of anything that does not support Android, iOS, or Windows Phone. So we want to develop for these platform, uh, platforms, but we are looking for a solution. What kind of solution? This solution has to comply with some certain requirements. Well, we have many platforms available at, at our disposal in terms of um, targets. So it would be interesting, these this right ones run anywhere. Um, it's the slogan of Sun for uh, its Java uh, language, but the the meaning is perfectly uh, fine. Also, with what we want to do here, we would like to have a framework when we develop our applications that gives us this ability to write it only once and be sure that it's going to run anywhere. It's going to run on uh, Blackberries. It's going to run on Windows Phone iOS and Android. We don't want to spend that much time into learning this uh, framework and it should be quick to iterate. And then we need, because we are approaching this problem with, uh, with a, from a RAD point of view, we need also rapid prototyping tools available for this framework. So this again explains why this three ideas for me are important. Uh, right ones run anywhere is important because it, it cuts engineering overhead, reducing the effort of creating several different native versions for each target. Then we need something that should be easy to learn and quick to iterate because we have to reduce the learning curve. And then we have to facilitate time boxing, which is essential when we are approaching uh, the problem from a RAD perspective. And then, well, we cannot really have uh, RAD, well, a RAD approach without prototyping tools. It would make it very cumbersome or uh, uneasy to, 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 to use. So some friends decided to develop this framework, which is getting more and more momentum and it's getting more and more famous. Of course, there are 
alternatives to it, to it. Some of you maybe are uh, more familiar with Sench Attach, which is, for example, an alter alternative to this framework. jQuery Mobile is a unified HTML5 based user interface system for all popular mobile device platforms built on the jQuery and jQuery user interface foundation. Um, if some of you are web developers, uh, for sure you have been, you have heard about jQuery. jQuery, um, we will see in a few slides why it's so effective, because it, it makes programming really, really easy in comparison to the to JavaScript, but still it is a JavaScript uh, library. It's based on JavaScript. Um, this this code that we can produce with jQuery with the jQuery mobile framework is <coughs> it's going to be very lightweight and uh, it, it is built with progressive enhancement. It has a flexible and easy themable design. What does it mean themable design. It means that it offers some themes. Some themes that can, some of them come already, uh, they, they come ready out of the box, or we can also do some customizations. Now, the important thing is, of course, we were talking about market shares, is the supported platforms. All the major ones are support, include Andro including Android, Apple, iOS, and Windows Phone. So we were saying that it's built on these two um, core elements. These are all, these are libraries as well, JavaScript libraries. Jqu what is jQuery? jQuery is a multi-browser JavaScript library designed to simplify the client-side scripting of HTML. Doesn't say much. Maybe you know. It, sometimes it's very easy to just see what it is that it does, and we, we're going to see that. jQuery's architecture allows developers to create to create plugin code to extend X functionality. Now, we, together with jQuery, it, I mean, it's not mandatory that you use both. You can use simply jQuery, but when you're using jQuery, you might want to take advantage of these other projects, which is jQuery user interfaces, and this is a user interface, and this is a JavaScript library that provides abstractions for low-level interaction animation, advanced effects, and high-level findable widgets built on top of the jQuery JavaScript library. Uh, so the two go together, and what is JavaScript, uh, what is jQuery mobile? It's a combination of these two, optimized for, uh, for the mobile uh, market. So let's take a look, I don't know, how many, how many of you know about jQuery? So almost everybody. Uh, so yeah, for those who don't know about jQuery, this is an example of, of why it makes life easy. For those of you who already know, it's just <laughs> going through it again. So in JavaScript, on, this is an example. For changing the background co uh, color of the DOM, um, we need all this stuff in JavaScript. We need a function, and as you can see, it's three lines of code. In jQuery, it's simply one line. Very extremely, extremely easy. That's why it saves a lot of time, and we can really go on with time boxing. So jQuery Mobile proves to be a, a, a proposed solution for this session. For I mean, it's a suggestion. This is also part of this framework. No? Uh, so the suggestion that I make is let's take into account this framework. Why? Because it has some important features. First of all, it supports different spin sizes and pixel densities and orientation. Why is this important? Well, it's not really that important on the iOS devices, but it's extremely important on the Android ones because while uh, the Apple devices, they have fixed, let's say, uh, screen sizes and pixel densities, now with the Retina devices, let's say we have introduced a new uh, pixel densities and uh, screen sizes, in the Android market, which is still, let's remember, the 60% of the market, we have so many devices with so many screen sizes, we really don't know. So it's important that this uh, framework is capable of dealing with this. Then, of course, jQuery Mobile is cross-platform, and this we gave it for granted from the start. 
The user interface, the interface is optimized for touch devices, so it is built with touch devices in mind. It has a different compatibility in terms of HTML5 and CSS3. It offers non-intrusive semantic HTML5, and it doesn't really require a strong knowledge, I would say, well, here I, I've written any knowledge. Let's say it's very easy to start off programming with jQuery Mobile. Uh, of course, some knowledge of JavaScript and CSS is recommended. Then it's open source and, and fully custom, uh, it can be easily customized. And it's only 12 kilobytes. Reminds me a bit of the old times of uh, computers. This is the phone of somebody's phone. Yeah. It's not for me, because it sounded like an applause. So, <laughs> so, that so uh, uh, when we're dealing with jQuery Mobile, there is a, a, ve a very important object that we have to take in mind, which is the page. This is the primary unit of interaction, interaction in jQuery Mobile, and it's very important that we understand this. Um, the HTML uh, uh, file that we're going to generate, uh, that we're going to create, will include many different pages. Actually, it can include only one page. jQuery Mobile supports different combinations <coughs> uh, of pages. It supports <coughs> single pages, multi-pages with transition, and dialogue, dialogue pages, and combinations of these. So, our in, in, in few words, our application can be simply a single page. It could be made of some single page, pages and some multi-pages with transition, and then dialogues. For example, uh, I cannot find a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, please check uh, your preferences. This is a dialogue. Let's see how it looks like. As you can see, this is very simple. This is a very e simple HTML page uh, which makes use of jQuery Mobile. This is how it's structured. And if you're familiar with HTML, you can see here we have, at the beginning, in the, in the head, we have the declarations for uh, calling these uh, libraries. And then, this is the page between uh, div data role page. And, and this is already an application that can uh, run. It, it doesn't really require much more than that. And what you would have here, if we could, if we could see this, we have a page that has a header, content and a footer. And all it requires is these few lines of code. Let's go further. So jQuery Mobile, since it's a combination between jQuery <coughs> and jQuery uh, UI, offers these nuts and bolts for creating very cool uh, graphic user interfaces. Um, they, these buttons or um, dialogues or uh, text areas are simply uh, called using a div, a div statement into the in the HTML code. They they look familiar in a way. If you have been playing with uh, m modern mobile phones, this this is a footer. You have seen it, and. It's really like playing with Legos at some point. You, you easily put everything together and you can come up with your user interfaces. Of course, this is what we have now. This is what jQuery Mobile is able to offer to us now. But that doesn't mean that in the future, um, this um, will be improved and will be enlarged with new um, widgets. Now, um, an example of application that I did using uh, jQuery Mobile is uh, any news by the International Atomic Energy Agency. This is an application that we, um, we have developed in NIST, Department of Nuclear Energy, and it's uh, a one-stop portal promoting the activities of the Nuclear Energy uh, Department of the IAEA, and it's entirely developed in uh, jQuery Mobile. You can download it and you can check it out. And 
or I can show to you how it looks like, which uh, I don't know if I can do now. This is because. So, how does it look? Let's see a bit. Okay, my simula simulator seems like it's dead. So, this is an application that is being written in jQuery Mobile. <laughs> you cannot see it there. As you can see, we have these elements that open up it's fully scroll you can scroll the application I'm sorry it doesn't look very nice because uh, this monitor doesn't really support uh, this exercise that I'm doing uh, maybe it's better we return to the um, to the slides um, So let's move on. Now we have seen what is jQuery Mobile a little bit. We have introduced it. And we can take a look at Codica. What is Codica? Well, Codica is a tool that we will use for prototyping, for rapid pro prototyping of an application. It is a web-based, what you see is what you get editor for fast prototyping. It outputs jQuery mobile uh, pages and the easiness of use permits uh, the user involvement as per the RAS paradigm. Now, what I would like to do if I manage with this uh, screen resolution is doing together um, uh, an exercise. The problem that we have here is that Let's imagine we work for an organization that will, wants to promote a three days conference on the release of a new product. And we have to provide all the necessary information and directions to the participants on a mobile application. So what we're going to do here is go and really launch Cosmia. <coughs> Hopefully I will manage to do it because, again, this screen resolution is a bit Can you see it or it's uh, or maybe it's a little bit less because this is sounds too much. Sixty hertz. Can you see it? Okay, so it looks <coughs> a little bit better. Um, so this was the application that I was trying to show you before. As you can see, we have uh, some widgets 
and then also um, some transitions. The footer is not visible still. The resolution is not big enough. Okay, let's go to the Codica project. So this is actually the, the finished application, which is very easy, but we're going to start from scratch. Let's go and introduce Codica really from scratch. So imagine that we want to create a, a project with this uh, tool. Let's call it Deathbed. Let's imagine that we need this pro we, we did this application for promoting um, DevFest special, uh, special conference. What I want to show you here is how easy it is to prototype with this tool an application for a mobile device. Well, generally what we have in, in a mobile application is a header. So we simply drag and drop a header here. What we also generally have is a footer. And we can drag and drop one here. And we can start to test our application. Codica offers this uh, slider where you can switch between build and test very easily. And you can see how the application looks like in real time. Then let's change here the name. And let's say, let's call it conference. In the footer, we can add buttons. These buttons will give us the ability to, to move between uh, certain transitions. Oh, let's do something different. Let's try one of the new um, widgets that Codica is offering, this panel. Maybe you have seen this panel in uh, in, in the Facebook application where you can actually slide the whole thing. So let's remove the text and let's see how it looks like. So we have a slider now and we can use this slider here to access different pages. So as we said, we need a page for the speeches that we okay. might have in a conference, so let's call these speeches. And uh, then we need the directions how to reach this conference. Maybe we want to add a contacts page, so let's call it contacts. And we start to have something. Let's put the, 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 header, the header here, and let's call it speeches. Then we do the same on this one. We call it directions. <coughs> if something is not clear, you can tell me. And then we can build contacts. And we are, we're almost there. We're almost finished with this exercise. So, okay. Now, here, we have created four pages. For each of these pages, we need a button to go back. So, go back. And as you can see, we have certain options with the button. And it's very easy to create a button that simply goes back to the history, which is what we need. We do the same here. We could have actually duplicated these pages, but the reason why I'm repeating this process for each single page is so that you can see it and becomes more familiar. Otherwise, it would be too fast, probably. Again, back here, and we can choose back in history. Then, in contacts, it's the same. We can, again, add a back button here. Or we can add something funny, which is, for example, a team switch. So if some people don't like the team, you can change by clicking this button. Now that we have all this, um, now that 
we have all these pages, we can go back to our slider and we start to add them here. <coughs> so, if you want to suggest some changes, since this is a rapi rapid application development exercise, you can suggest something. Wh what would you like to see here? So the users, which is you, uh, can be involved. So, suggest something. If you, if you want to see something, just say it. Um, we can add a first in the now we, we don't really see what I'm doing here because it, it's gonna uh, appear when we open the slider but we have three pages so speeches goes to links to page speeches, speeches. can you see it here? then we add another button and this button, directions, we link to directions. And we add, add another one, the last one, contact. This is for, this goes to contact form. We can also add a button that goes, for example, directly to a URL. Let's imagine we want to make a uh, give the chance to go and visit the company uh, on page, the company's on page, so. We have this one, and this goes to a new URL. Codica will open up this dialog, and we can say, company company.it. Now we are finished, we're gonna see what, what I just did is, I added all the page pages and we have all the pages here. And we can easily go to each of these pages simply from the slider. Now, let's go forward. For example, in the conference we might want to add an image. So, as you can see I can move easily um, the widgets. We can add two, so let's choose an image. For example, this is the image of, of the conference. And here we can add a description of what this conference <coughs> is about. And as you can see, Kotika offers something that looks like Microsoft Word. I mean, a little <laughs> Microsoft Word here. And well, let's say, conference is about this and that. Sorry, I'm out of fantasy. If you want to suggest something, uh, what it could be about, I, I don't know. Um, then, in the speeches, we might want to see a list of all the, of the speeches that we're going to have. So we simply add this divider. We will call speeches on uh, IT topics and then we will start to add buttons these buttons can link to pages they can link to other pages let's imagine that we have different PDF files we could link um, some brochures here or other stuff like this let's add other buttons to make it look like more realistic and then we can decide on the on the team. As you can see we can change the theme of the single one. In this case we wanna stay with what we have. But I want to change the the divider to A so that it's black. You can see we have many different um, teams here. They can be all, they all can be customized by accessing directly the CSS of a uh, uh, jQuery mobile. Now the directions, well, we imagine we want to add a map. We simply have to do this. And uh, let's see, let's say the location is the Technical University of Vienna. You can see Cars Plus is already here. And well, it's, it's pretty easy. Then in the contacts, we might want to add some text input and maybe a button to send an email. Email, maybe we want 
it also to include a, a, a picture, photo input. Let's see. Yeah, you can also send for whatever reason a picture. And I think we are almost done. There is nothing else to do. Here is our application, and this prototype has been made in probably 10 minutes or maybe less. Let's see how it works. We can go to see the speeches here. And here is our list. We can go and see the directions. And we can play with the map and see where are we. We can go and check. Oh, I didn't link the, the company on page doesn't have a real URL, maybe I should have put Google, but anyway. And here we have this contacts page. Of course, this is a very cheap prototype made in very little time. It's just to show you how easy it is to create a, a mobile application. Now we can do an experiment. With Kotika, you can export the project. And when I export the project, what I, what I receive is, you see, I have different options here. The pro this project can be uh, exported in HTML in Android to Android to an Android format for debugging or to iOS with PhoneGap. We're going to speak about PhoneGap in a minute. So let's simply choose HTML and you'll see why. And let's export this, uh, this project. Now I have a zip file here. And the zip file will be e extracted into this temp directory that I have here. So I will connect to my own website now. And what I will do is I will upload this stuff into this test directory. This is the old one. Let's put the new one that we just made. So we bring everything, we select everything, and we move it here. Now what happens? Do you have a Wi-Fi connection? So I would suggest you to go and check. this link. how it looks like in Safari, but it should look <coughs> a little bit better on your mobile phones. So anybody managed to look to, to get it on the mobile phone working? I see <coughs> there's a bit of silence. It, it's not working. So who made it? It's okay. How, how does it look? It's the same. <coughs> So this is, we, we basically did this very e uh, simple prototype in, uh, together in a few minutes. And I think we are almost, we are finished with this. Of course, as you understand, everything could be made better in this case. Uh, you can add a background, you can add a header, uh, you can add pictures, you can customize this as much as you wish. You can play with the transitions. For example, here when <coughs> we are testing the application, you can see that you have a sliding transition when you go here. But you could also have different kind of transitions to make it look more cool or nicer. So, for example, you can choose here that you want to have a uh, let's see, a, a pop transition 
when 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 we act when we are, uh, when we go to the speeches. This is not the one. I want to go speeches. I want a pop transition instead of simply simply using the slide one. So let's see what happens. You have this popping effect, <coughs> while before you had this sliding one. So you can really customize it as you wish, as you prefer. There are so many options in Codica, and um, I, I en encourage you to, to check by yourself. This, this software has 15 days uh, of trial for free for everybody, but there, there are also other options, free ones, if you want, to, if some of you are interested in a free option, I would recommend you to check also this one. This is called RIB. The problem with RIB is that, as you can see, it looks similar to Codica in a way. You can preview the same, but it's not really <laughs> as nice as the other one. This is completely free. It's an open source project. Last time it was updated in uh, 2015, February. It is also a good start if you don't want to spend money on Codica. Codica, uh, for this presentation, made us a gift. So uh, before leaving, please pass by the desk because there is a promotion. Uh, they decided to sponsor this uh, speech. So there will be a very favorable condition for, for all those who have attended. Uh, but it's, it's also important to know that there are other options. If some of you are into the open source, uh, are busy in the, some of you are busy uh, in the open source community, you might want to consider giving a hand to this other project, which is also very nice. Um, let's move back now to, um, to our slides. We're almost close to the end. Now we, we have this application that we made, but at some point we might want to go native. What does it mean? Uh, it might become useful at some point that we, when, when you access the, the page, you were using your, uh, the web browser that is included in your, um, in your mobile device. You were using this web browser, and so of course also the, the size was a little bit smaller, the, the, was the, the address um, bar and all these things. At some point it, it can become useful to create a native application and make it a little bit more uh, target-oriented for some specific mobile devices. We have some options that can be useful for uh, going native starting from a jQuery mobile project. The options that we have are, at the time, many. I would like to mention this one. PhoneGap, first and foremost. Recently, this has been acquired by Adobe. Corona, Titanium, and others. How do these things work? Well, we have developed uh, an application in HTML and CSS. These pages will be wrapped into a framework which will pro provide a compatibility layer with the mobile device. So we will not change our code, the code will be exactly still the same, but this framework will wrap up this application so that it can go native on the mobile devices. So what are the pros of these solutions? this solution. Why do we want to go native with using PhoneGap or uh, Corona, or Titanium or whatever? Well, since the, the front end of the application has been built using web technologies, a PhoneGap application with exact same source code can be deployed acro across different platforms right off the hook. We already have the source code and we are ready to, to target without making ma any major changes. Then we also have two uh, pros, that two things, two advantages that we cannot have simply 
using the, this application that we have developed through the web browser. We can access some uh, native functionality of the mobile device. For example, we can access the camera, geolocation, the contacts of the phone. Uh, if we are using the browser uh, of, the, of the mobile phone, we don't have access to these na native functionalities. So geolocation wouldn't work, and in the ca case of the conference, uh, well, we might want to use that, and we don't have, for example, access to the contacts, or we don't have access to the, uh, mail, to the mail application that we have on the phone. And then we have also another advantage, which is the offline usage. Imagine that you are on an airplane, and uh, this application includes some, um, some pages that can be seen offline. If we always rely on the, the web browser, we have also to rely always on an internet connection. So it might be useful to have this solution. Of course, there are some cons. When we compile, let's say, these applications with PhoneGap, let's say PhoneGap is what I really re would recommend to use at this point, we have some uh, cons. And first and foremost is speed. Now, we cannot really think that an application that is wrapped into a framework can be as fast as one that is native. So s these applications might be significantly slower than the native counterparts. Uh, this is a, a bit of a problem. Now we are comparing not anymore web browsing against native. Now we are comparing native applications developed with, uh, wrapped up into Titanium or PhoneGap against uh, native applications, let's say, developed with Objective-C on the iOS platform. Uh, well, if you take Corona, for example, this doesn't provide any ability to stream MP3 files. So if you are de developing an application on the iOS uh, platform, and this application needs to stream uh, mp3 files, well, you're out of luck. This is not going to work. On some of the older Android devices, I've tried doing some development with uh, PhoneGap, and the difference uh, in terms of speed is, uh, is significant. So it depends, at the end, on what you're doing, what is your goal, what you plan to develop, what you plan to achieve. And depending on this, um, what we discussed today might be good for you or might not be good for you. Um, everything has to be put in frame with whatever the project we are discussing is about. So we have one minute for question. We, we finish in time. No questions. <laughs> okay, everything was clear. You want to... So what did you do with it? <laughs> <laughs> you want the question, sorry. <laughs> Which was? We have Codiga. You prototype, uh, you, make, you make rapid prototyping. No, what did you do with it? What, what did you do with it? Ah, what did I do? Well, I showed you the application that we did uh, in, uh, at the IAEA. We used Codiga for uh, at, the at the beginning stages. And then, of course, we went a little bit further um, customizing it manually, let's say. Uh, you this was made in, it started off in Codica, really. Um, as you can see, it's uh, accessing <coughs> some, uh, it's been then uh, wrapped up in PhoneGap, and PhoneGap with the Cordova library provides a reader for PDF files. This application has been made with the help of Codica. The prototyping was made with Codica. Then it, it's been customized because, let's say, what Codica was offering at the time was not sufficient for getting exactly what we wanted. But a prototyping is useful because when you are presenting uh, an application, imagine to your manager. So 
it's very important if you want to uh, have an interaction with your managers, with your users, it's very good that you have the ability to deliver immediately a prototype. And then you can refine it. And then you can go in depth and make it more and more uh, customized to or custom tailored to what you need. So this is an example of what I, what I did with, with Codica. It started off with Codica, but it was not the end of it because then you need other things. I was telling you, for example, this is wrapped up in, in, uh, in Cordova, and so it was not sufficient to do a prototype in Codica. I had also to go and um, make this application work with what Cordova is offering, which is PDF reader, uh, and other uh, specific features. So this is an example of what you can do. Now, mm, of course, it's going to be very easy, and this is what we are working at the moment to to make a porting, to make to port this application to other uh, devices, for example, Android or uh, the iPhone. The code is not going to uh, to really change. So minor adaptations will be needed, for example, for uh, screen sizes. But at the end, the code will stay the same. And this is really uh, the power of jQuery Mobile. You don't have to make many changes. Any other questions? OK. So if you drop by here, courtesy of Codica, we have some uh, discount coupons. You can come and take them. It's uh, a 50% off on the first month. You can subscribe only for one month if you want to develop something. Um, or you, you might want also to, to try a, a longer period of time. Or an alternative is if you don't want to invest any money, I, money, I would suggest you to try the 15 days uh, free trial. That's nice for uh, starting to develop your own little applications. Then, um, what I would like to add to just conclude this for Android and uh, the iOS uh, platforms, once you have finished your application, of course you want to sell it. In the case of uh, iOS, you will go through the, the App Store, you will have to sign your application with a very interesting system that of provisioning profiles, which always gives me headaches. Um, and then after you sign this application, you will upload it to the App Store. Apple will review it, a, pro a procedure that can take five days up to a few weeks, and then your application will be on the market. On the, on the other hand, for Android, you will go through Google Play. It can sound complicated, but it's not. Um, if you have some questions about the how to, to develop further on the iOS uh, platform, you need to use Xcode. Um, you have to, to be a developer and you have to buy a developer license for getting Xcode. Unfortunately, um, for even for developing the application for the iOS, you have to pay $99 to Apple or $90, I don't remember exactly. On Android, uh, you have to pay once. It's a little bit, um, it's a bit cheaper. You pay only once and then you can develop. You don't have Xcode on, uh, for Android. You can use uh, Eclipse, which is a very famous uh, tool for development. And I think this concludes our session. I hope you liked it. It was not too boring. <laughs> and thank you very much for coming.